officially welcome to this week's podcast video chat uh artist stop being poor get together we got aaron jack today connecting from somewhere in the u.s which i forgot where he's going to tell us all about her uh, all about it he is an artist he is a community builder he hosts interviews with artists on a regular basis on a schedule that i personally do not understand how he is able to to maintain interviewing so many artists so regularly and uh, he's also a clubhouse dj now and he is just great at connecting with artists getting artists to know each other and sharing a little bit behind their stories so without further ado aaron would you like to introduce yourself <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm just so happy to be here with with uh, with you, all of you, um, and to just share what what I've learned and uh, whatever I can offer uh, this community because you you've been building such a wonderful community. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you um, since interviewing you. So it's like it's nice to you know make it reciprocal i think that's so important at the um the basis of um i don't know just building relationships and connections and building community across the world is how are we uh you know paying it forward and then how how are we able to uh also give back and i think it's it's not as you know sometimes it's monetarily and sometimes it's in other ways and i think Sometimes it's um, just by building that community together, like how can we pay it forward um, in, in this world? And, so, and sometimes specifically in very specific communities. So I, I really appreciate um, this opportunity to be here with you today. Yeah, and especially, especially, especially in the art world where everything we do every exhibition or opportunity or 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 magazine uh publication everything is based on the the communities and the connections we do uh, no 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 gallerist is just gonna stumble across your artwork by mistake or by chance it's always because you fostered a relationship with that person that opportunities arise so uh, tell me a little bit about you know, let, let's start with, with, you know, yourself, you know, well, where did your art career start? Uh, where did it come from? Um, were, were you always sure that you wanted to be an artist? Um, well, I've, I've always made art. So I've always, I've always been creating art. Um, I, for a long time, I mostly focused on the photographic media and work kind of along those lines, photography, video, um, and presented that work and work professionally in that way uh, for a long time. So, and a lot in the um, photographing people. So it was always really about like connections. So always on the back, you know, kind of like behind the scenes I'd paint and I'd do, do that kind of work. Um, but then, I just kind of shifted during the pandemic, trying to find a way uh, to connect more because so much of my work is about connection, whether I'm interviewing people, working with musicians or dancers, um, or even just like fashion work. It's all just like connecting with people. So during the pandemic, I was looking at some of my photographs and I started to paint some of the people that I'd photographed and that started to get me in contact with them. And that connection, um, even through this digital sphere, became kind of like what it was in interviewing artists. It, it became that connectivity through the digital sphere. So it's, it's really about this connection. Like we're connecting here from across the world. And so my art uh, speaks to that yeah and uh you know like music and photography for example these two examples that you you mentioned are somewhat you know except if you're a nature photographer but even that 
they are our community based uh, art forms it's like filmmaking you know it's like you really cannot you know do music uh, alone as an art form because even if you're a solo artist you have the public you know you have uh, uh, collaborators and photography uh, it, it's also you know you can be a landscape photographer you know but any other sort you know will rely on on people you know, so creating those connections uh you know grows your career yeah that well you know that's really interesting it's it's just like that community aspect is so important for photography for video who um it's always like who am i photographing or how are they viewing me and kind of this like internal external relationship how do i view myself is the only way that i'm going to be able to photograph another person to be able to see them through my eyes to be able to be reflective upon myself is the only way that i'm able to reflect upon another so it's in just a way it's 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 intriguing for me and i think that's all that really matters for my own work is that it's intriguing for me but i'm like but i'm connecting with others you know it's not just about me but it, i think it starts from that like what is curious to me what brings me joy and i th and i think that's for others too and also like this and i was just talking to george co he's a stein young steinway artist he's talking about three principles he was talking about pure joy per, pure curiosity and discipline like discipline to craft and i think with those three things, I've just been thinking about this for the last few weeks, really. It, it's just so essential, um, just in the application of those. Okay. And um, you've been interviewing and artists during the pandemic. Were you doing that before as well? Or, or it's just something that came from that lack of, of meeting artists in real life? Um, it started in the pandemic for sure. Um, and then it just kind of grew. So it was just step by step. I I've been interviewing musicians for the last bunch of years. So that just kind of turned into me having done that for years and years. And then I was just like, Oh, now that I'm doing this and now that there's, you know, the time to do it, it just seemed like a good idea. So now I've done probably over 130 some interviews with different people in the visual art world. So it's um, and, and it's kind of one of those things like, does it expand and just like on the forefront of cure of my own curiosity? I think that's that's the important part for me is just like. What am I curious about? Who am I curious about? And how can I um, play with that and uh, and share from that place of curiosity? Yeah, because um, th these questions that you personally have for these interviewees are the, the the questions that you know other people might have when they're viewing your interviews. So. At the end of the day, you are um, being a little bit of, of, a, of a channel, channeling, you know, other people's desires and curiosities about X, Y, Z artist into the questions that you ask. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting the um, how the the channeling of the curiosities. I really look at it as the art onto itself is us asking our own questions like like what is beauty in life i just sometimes sit there now in the morning and i just consider you know what are these questions that i have for the world like what's a how do i how do i just take a moment and be with myself and find that muse like where does it come from i don't know but i think that's like you know, that might be like the starting point of a conversation for me or the starting point of a question is kind of like that repetition of tapping into my own 
muse and saying, okay, what is it? How can I be present with it? And then say yes to it. And I just had this conversation with Helen who goes by Unskilled Worker and it, Helen Downey. And it was just like, you know, that one moment that she had as like that inspiration. And I find that 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 she like taps into that one point that she had and then she works on that painting for six weeks. So it's just kind of like, I find that as I talk to people, they're, it's, it's not just like, I'm going to ask this like set of questions. It's that I'm going to learn something. I'm going to be curious and I'm going to ask the thing that comes up from inside of me. And that's the, that's the same kind of thing. I think, you know, the interviewing I view as just one of, you know, this art forms of how we connect together. So it's like the same thing with my painting, um, with any of my work is that it's a form of connection, um, both internally as well as externally. And so some of my work, it focuses more on one or the other, but it's, but a lot of my work um, so far has been focused on that kind of realm, whether that's the interviewing or painting or photography. Mm-hmm. Even the DJ. <laughs> Even the DJ. Uh, Even the DJ. Let, let's talk about that like in a little while, because that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> So, so you've you've been um, in, interviewing musicians even before this, and now you you passed into artists. Have you said uh, have you found differences between talking with maybe visual artists and musicians in the way they communicate their ideas? You know, because music goes in through your ear holes, and <laughs> art comes in through your eye holes. So it's different ways to consume. You know, so so do these different types of artists talk differently about their craft, about their art? That's an intriguing question. Uh, You know, I think it's somewhat being tuned into the individual. I think that's really at the core and the center of it. In terms of patterns of them, you know, it's interesting. My my music interviewing was very much of like a long term thing where I had the same kind of group and I'd talk to them and interview them over the course of years. I'd take there's a small group that I'd interview over the course of the years where this one so far has been a lot of artists where I've interviewed them each once or twice um, so far. Um, but that may, you know, that may change. So it just, I think it's, I think it's in the, in the communication styles, I, I find that intriguing is like the reference is, um, you know, does the audience, I, I, I asked myself, like, I've had a lot of feedback now by doing so many interviews so regularly that I've put out online. So much of the music work I'd chop up and I'd put out into a section. So it was less about me being in front of the camera. Um, this, this may not get to your exact question, but just like to, for me, it was a little bit of that difference. And I, and I think that there's different styles. With this, I'm really putting myself out there front. So I think somewhat is like the references, but once we take some of those references away and talk about what is at the heart and the core of like the, uh, the being in the mind being, you know, being as a human being. Um, I think that's, if you can hear the sound outside, I can put on some headphones. Um, no, no, it's, it's okay. I, I think we can hear some birds chirping, but who's going to complain yes. about birds chirping? You know, like <laughs> sociopaths, maybe. Um, Perfect. Yeah, actually, Perfect. actually, we didn't get to like, where, where are you based? 
It's like, oh, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh, PA, Pittsburgh, okay. Pennsylvania. You know, but I'd like to say on this whole like age of the metaverse is really like we are in the same room. Exactly. You know, we are. We're in the same space, right? You're you're in the same space I'm in. Like, our. I've been thinking about this lately, and and I think that, like, this this whole idea of we, you know, whoever's listening right now, we're in the same space. The same way is like when we're looking, when we're reading a book the words, you know, we all come to the same space. We all come to the same experience. We can all come, can, you know, have the ability to come to the same moment in time when we're reading a book. And in the same way, when we're here with audio or video, we're able to come to the same space. What that space is, is we're each able to, you know, as a community, we're able to build that together. What does that space look like? And I find it really intriguing is that in this space where we've become totally abstracted from the physical space in a lot of ways with each other, we've come to this abstract space and it's not only like, what do we see around us, but it's also the words and the feelings, intentions, emotions, um, that bring us together. And I, and I find that really fascinating that through our words, our questions, that we're able to come together in the same space. We're able to play music together. Someone's able to play music and bring us into that music, that moment in time, that, that experience and transmute our feelings. We're able to look at a piece of art. We're able to all go there together. And I think it's more than just like, oh, the sensory that we're able to see it in this 360 space and touch and feel, but words alone can take us to a space. The uh, single image is able to take us to a space. A single line is able to take us to a space. This is very interesting. I have like, you know, you you you, you spoke and I have like three questions in a row that I, that I want to ask. Uh, first off, is there a huge community in, in Pennsylvania? Do you, do you have like a local art community or, or is it not so? These are good questions. <laughs> it's just because you're talking about, yeah, we are in the same virtual room. John is in the US, Rome is in the US, uh, Jordana is in Berlin, I'm in Berlin, you're in the US, you know, it's like, but we we don't miss anything from being on, on other sides of the, like, we still communicate freely. And um, I find that very interesting because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm lucky, I, I live in, in Berlin, and there's like 11 billion artists in this city. So I feel blessed, you know, but I know also other artists that live in smaller communities or less creative communities, if you want to call it, and they don't have this direct access to artists and to, to their insights. So, you know, do, you know, it's just like the internet is amazing in that. And on the other hand, I, I just wanted to comment on this idea that yes, you and I can read the same uh, book you me and john can see one of your interviews and we are experiencing the same content we're experiencing the same book but our experience with that book is going to be completely different because uh you know uh like this interview that we're having right now everybody that hears it will will take different parts of it at value and ignore different parts and no two people will you know experience music the same way art the same way and uh, I just find that very fascinating and beautiful. And, you know, it's like six billion ways, you know, like there's six billion people in the world. That means there's at least six billion ways to, to interpret an artwork. Well, you know, the in intriguing thing is that even moment to moment, we're able to reinterpret the same flower in a different way. And I think this really gets at finding that muse of that one moment and considering it. And I find that, you know, it's like meditation. 
is that we're able to meditate on that on that singular moment and and i think that's in the observation of not only at the external world but is but also the internal world and to see the my factors uh come and go the you know whether that's the anger or the mindfulness that these is that there's the passing of them from some buddhist philosophy so i i find that I, I just find that fascinating that it's not only the each individual person sees it differently. It's moment to moment. We can see the same, the same flower differently. Um, not only in the change of our, like how we're, you know, the physical space, but also to understand it differently mm. uh, based on our own internal understanding of ourselves. And what is passing and going, you know, within each of us. That, that's even smarter than what I said. You know, it's like, let's take Radiohead, for example, one of my favorite bands. If I'm depressed and I listen to a Radiohead song, I'm going to perceive it differently than in a good mood. And the same thing can happen, you know, with a piece of art or a book. You know, if you read a book when you're a kid and you read it as an old person, you know, you're going to have completely different experiences with that. And it's just like, I, I take back what I said about six <laughs> mi billion ways to interpret an artwork. There's like infinite, because if you go to the same museum a hundred days in a row, you're going to experience that museum a hundred different ways, at least, you know? I mean, I, it, isn't that the thing about a good piece of art is that we can continue to go back to it every day that we have the artwork on our walls, you know, that I have my, even that I have my, own, you know, some of my own artwork here, like uh, that I'm able to keep going back to, you know, my own work in that way is that, and I think that's the thing is that I find so nice, what, you know, is to create something to, to create to understand something that I'm able to continue to come back to. And I think that's, you know, what, what makes good work. That would, that's what makes a good book. That would, that's what makes, you know, a, a good, I mean, there's some things that are just meant to be ephemeral and that's good too. I, you know, what is good, what is bad, but like, I think that there's something intriguing about a piece of work that I'm able to come back to. Um, I make plenty of work that's ephemeral and that's, that's another experience because I think all of these things are in dichotomies, the, the paradoxes and double paradoxes of it all. And, and that's what, <laughs> you know, so I say this thing, but at the, but on the other side, like the ephemeral, is beautiful because then we know you know there's so much beauty in the ephemerality I, I i create work that's in sand or in um or in snow and then it's there and then it's gone it's observed and then passed oh my god it's, oh my god i have like uh my girlfriend has this book of like a hundred philosophical <laughs> thinking games let's call it like that and there was just this one that is exactly what you said it's a man that goes to the beach and he noticed somebody drawing on the beach and he's like wow that drawing looks like a picasso and he's like what the fuck that is picasso drawing on the on the beach what do i do the the, the tide is coming up and it will destroy that artwork do I run home do i grab my camera and hope to come back and still be able to see this or do I just enjoy the, the moment? And does that artwork then mean less because it will not exist tomorrow? But then you think maybe the artwork was the experience of being on a beach and running into Picasso and he's like painting some stuff on the on the sand, you know, and, and that's the artwork itself. It's not, you know, the the the, the, the photography of the artwork. Even though now, you know, it's like you can make 
video art on top of the ephemeral art and you know you can even double down and sell it as an nft if you're in that uh spiele you know? but uh, it's, it's very interesting just just remind me of of this little philosophical game that my my girlfriend played on me my 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 input was the most valuable thing about this is is the story that you can tell that once you were in a beach and you run into Picasso painting on the sand. You know, it's, it's who cares about the artwork, you know? It's and actually like any artwork, you know, who cares about this painting that I have right here? I love this painting though. It's like not not throwing shade on this painting, but it's just blobs of paint on a canvas. What makes it special is the story behind it, right? You know, I, I think it all, <laughs> you know, we can, we can take so much as the, um, the, the one way to look at it. And I, you know, we can argue and we can argue against it. We can, you know, that's philosophy in a lot of ways. And, but I think beyond philosophy, you know, it's like to look at philosophy, we then have to look at the mindset of being inside of the philosophy that it's a that it's a story it's a creative mindset onto itself and that in the discussion of these things is that that's the that's the beauty is the discovery the curiosity the intrigue the story we're able to be inside of uh you know an amazing book that we're able to, you know that inside of the thought patterns we're able to exist momentarily together in that whatever that means is we're able to look at the same flower together for that singular moment from our own perspectives and a way we're able to observe ourselves and i find that intriguing is can we look at the, you know, as we look at the art, as we look at the creative experience of life, the the life force that brings us into the world, that brings us into the plane of connecting with each other, the plane of connecting within ourselves. Are we able to play with that? Are we able to enjoy life? Yeah. with each other yeah and 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 just like art has just like this this fantastic quality of of playfulness if, if you're not playing around and having fun and and being a little bit childish about your art making um i i, I don't want to sound totalitarian over here but you're doing it wrong you know i, I don't i don't want to be a dictator of the art world but if you're not having fun and not playing around you're just like doing the wrong way <laughs> I, I hated to say that there's a wrong way to make art, you know, but you know, like you need to have fun with it, right? I, you know, I agree. I'm in fact doing a um, a whole pan. I'm leading a panel discussion in a little bit um, about that exact thing: education, art, and play. Um, so, I I think that's a really important thing. Uh, play to our, our creative process and what does it mean to play with the art in the same way play with life to take a chance to experiment to experience something in a slightly new way and to say does this work i don't know like i was just like oh i'm gonna do this instagram live thing i'm just yeah. gonna and, try it out see what and, happens and like, 130 you know? uh, ex uh, 130 uh interviews later you know it's like oh yeah sure you know, it's like it, it, it probably started off as like a game and I, and it just clicked in my mind why do adults you know uh like 99 percent of adults you know like do not perceive art as a genuine pathway or a career it's because it involves so much playing around and playing is not an adult's thing. That's a child's thing. So it, it, it just, you know, it's just like, bro, it's like clicked in my mind. People don't tell you that you should be an artist because 
art is playfulness and you know after you're 12 you're not supposed to play anymore you're supposed to start being a serious human being you know Boo. And, yeah, it's like click <laughs> okay um tell me a you little bit about um the interviews that you'll be having and all that you've been learning about you know it's like it, it's just fascinating because uh a, a lot of people, you know, go to university to get a chance to to to, to learn about artists and and their their stories and whatnot. Not a lot of people has the chance to to talk one on one with 130 artists. You know, even even us, you know, it's like very few of us had the possibility to meet 130 different artists. You know, it's like let's call it 120 because there are some that you interview twice, but still. Uh, a number. Uh, how did getting these so different perspectives of art, because then again, every artist has its own mindset. How did that change you? You know, all these, these influences and all this, you know, different points of view. Well, I, I look at it as kind of like a challenge every time and, and I just allow it to change you know, allow it to be an observation. And then I get to, you know, play with that observation. Oh, over, over the course of my week. So now I get to play around with this idea that I just talked to Helen, these, some of these ideas that I talked to Helen about of re, reobserving nature and taking that time away from the art, but playing with the muse and, and I mean, she didn't call it the muse, but I, but you know, we might not call it the, you know, these things, the exact thing, but this moment of inspiration, this moment, this first moment and not fighting it. So, so for me, it's like now after having the conversation, I get to play around with the, these ideas that she talked about and play around with it inside of me. And it's, um, I think in the same way that I would go to like a lecture for school, it's like, how can I go out and be engaged with the world? And I, and I, and it's, um, and it's allowed me to be engaged. And I, and I think, and, and I think it's actually a good project for anybody who's in, interested in this sort of, um, you know, art is to go out and, interview a bunch of um artists and people in the art world I, I think it's you know i i think it's the more people that do it because it doesn't need to be just the galleries who are doing the interviewing um you know it's a particular skill to have a you know to interview or to hold a conversation but i think that's such an essential part of it that we're you know we're building relationships, we're building community. How can we all help, you know, our community lift up? How can we connect to other communities? Um, you know, there are gonna be some people that they're like, this is my thing, I'm doing this, this is 24 seven. Um, you know, like I've done so many of them and I have so many more booked and that that's not for everybody, but like, to just do one once in a while and talk and lift other artists up, I think is so important as artists. And to, and it's a good, it's connected me with galleries. It's connected me with art dealers. It's connected me with so many intriguing people and with illustrators. I've interviewed uh, people who work at Disney and animation, you know, who are heads of like, you know, where the camera is and, you know, in some of the big animated movies and it's um it's it's just a new i'm, I'm just invigorated by it and, and i'm glad that my interviews are able to invigorate others but i encourage others to also and and, and there is no way that you do not learn a thing or two from each one of these interviews like you would have to be the most <laughs> stubborn person in the world to interview that many artists and not get one little nugget of knowledge from each one of them. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and, and 
and and and e uh, just like you know, uh, talking what you said, even if you don't interview them, quote unquote, uh, as artists, we should be making an active effort to being talking with other artists that are you know different than us, you know, because you know, if we're a painter. You know, we should be talking with sculptures. If we are sculptures, we should be talking with photographers because uh, every art practice is like so intertwined that that we can. You know, I, I had this professor for for like the very brief time in life that I went to art school. Uh, I had this uh, sculpture professor, um, and he said that that you know like he would do drawings of his sculptures before he started, so his studio would be like a hundred drawings of a same sculpture that he was working on. And when he would get block on one side that he wouldn't do, he had all the drawings to, to see it. So like art is so cross disciplinary that, that you just need to get out of your, your bubble and talk to other people. You know, I, I think that's really about life in general is that we need to get out of, out of our bubble and talk to people. We need to go, you know, I think traveling is so important for the human experience to get out of our bubble, to uh, go and engage in the world, um, to engage in an artful way, <laughs> I'd say is, you know, in a playful way and, and, uh, and create together. And I, I think that's, you know, how can we engage in our own community? How can we engage in others? How can we observe? Uh, the outside world, it's like, oh, there's a construction worker. Oh, there's, uh, I've, I've done a whole series of like construction worker photographs. I'm just intrigued. You know, I think it's just like, I'm curious. It's like, oh, like, how do they live their lives? And for me, it just comes from a place of curiosity. And I think the more that each of, each of us is able to engage with our curiosity and engage with other human beings and find empathy in the world, I think the world will be a more beautiful place. And I think as artists, it needs to start, you know, that changing of the world to give empathy and understanding to the world, it needs to start with us. It needs to start with us building communities and connecting and find empathy with other human beings in the world, because that's what the world is going to see. That's what the world is going to know. And that's how we as artists can change the world. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. You know, it's like I, I always think about this. You know, it's like you cannot be a racist if you traveled enough. You know, you cannot be anti-migration if you know the world. You know, you're only a racist or, or a, 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 a xenophobe if you don't know the world well enough. You know, it, it's it's like it, it's a global village. So if you get to know it well enough, if you get to get d different people well enough, you will understand, you know, the value of each person and you will stop being an asshole, you know. So I, I, I got a solution for racism, you know, it's just like put them on planes and make them go travel the world. But, you know, it's like. It's kind of like complicated because you don't want to prize racists with like free plane tickets around the world, but <laughs> so it, it will kind of solve it. it. It kind of solves the problem, right? You know, so it's like, oh, you're a racist. Okay, here's a world trip. Go, go meet some Chinese people. Go meet some, some, some African people. You know, go to Eastern Europe. You know, and you'll find out that you know, it's like, you stop being a racist, but. I, I don't know who I need to talk to to make this project happen. So I'm so, I'm behind this <laughs> avant-garde social solutions. <laughs> okay, um, we're we're running we've out been, of time. Some hostels for a while with yeah. <laughs> and some different places. It it uh it, it cures a lot of, you know, it's kind of like when people need to rely on each other, and I think that's. I think that's such a thing in the interconnectedness of the global village that we're coming to the, um, you know, Marshall McLuhan talked about this, um, just that we're coming up, you know, with the global village. And I, I think it's so important to consider, you know, right now, what does that global village look like? How can we each, you know, as artists consider this because these visions you know it's like artists visual sound writing this is you know the music this is where where 
people get envision and create from you know it's like oh let's go to the moon it's you know an artist did the illustration and someone could envision that yes this is an important thing that we work together to make this you know that gather people together to say yes we can envision this together we can envision this moment we can um we can see that this adventure is beyond ourselves mm -hmm. uh in my recent project of mine i took uh i i did with my interloops group it's a band immersive theater group um where we took a bunch of people including jim green nasa's lead scientist to mars and back on an immersive audio journey and um, and I think it's really intriguing is that it, we can play with, you know, whether that's the audio, the visuals, whatever, we're not restricted. We put these identities onto ourselves, but I think that, you know, what you're saying about play travel, these are, these are things that are, you know, just tools in a toolkit to find connectiveness, to find empathy, mm -hmm. to find understanding, to find insight in this life. Yeah, and that's that's very interesting what you said, because like, yeah, we got to the moon, we got to the bottom of the oceans, but before we got there, Jules Verne wrote a fucking book about going to the moon like 200 years ago. So it was art before it became science. So by making it art, we as a society kind of like assimilated that one day it would be possible. And the same thing with like traveling, you know, under like the, the 20,000 leagues under the, the, the sea. Oh, it was, you know, art. And then, you know, it was like, let's make some submarines. It was like. Oh, I love that. I, sorry. I, I, that just, I loved um, that point as a writer and someone involved with words I do believe in the art of words themselves preceding something that you can create the possibility through language for people to be open to an idea or open to um, change or some kind of vision which seems i don't know not possible so yeah it's yeah. uh you know the first the artists need to incept the idea that it's possible and then the scientists make it happen so i i we're, we're running out of time so i wanted to close off uh with how did making all these interviews impact your career because art world is all about connection it's all about who you know and uh, you know 130 more people than you knew when you started this. So tell me a little bit about that. Tell me about well, the, the selfish side of, of these <laughs> interviews. I, I know we talked about this. It's, it's, it, you didn't do it for selfish reasons, but it has selfish consequences because it helps you elevate yourself. Uh, it gets you in touch with people and it gets you, you know, to, to pick their brain. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, at some degree, like, you know, in the same way, you know, you know, going to university is a selfish act. Education, it's like, you know, in the same way that education is a selfish act, I think it's just like, how do we take education upon ourselves? I'm really, really a big advocate of, of us changing, you know, taking a education and what what needs to be in the world, what we understand in the world upon ourselves. And I, and I think the more that we do that and not say, oh, this, this institution is there to educate me, is that there's, you know, there's systems in place that can be played with in order for us to educate each other. Because we each have something very special to offer. But when we focus and we really give time to the people who are like i want to learn from you even for an hour or two it's such a beautiful thing i, I find to like concentrate on a singular person and to say what can we learn 
from this person? What can we learn from their experience? How can I be a, uh, a vessel, a space for them to express? In the same way, a gallery is a space for a painting, for people to understand, to experience life, to feel again, the same way is that we can be vessels for others to express themselves in very short ways now with like, you know, with we're doing this on Google Meets or Instagram Live or whatever way is that there's very simple ways just having a conversation and being so intrigued by somebody else and curious. And that for me hasn't only connected to that one person, but each time that I reach out, it's giving me a way to reach out and then connecting with those communities. And then I'm able to connect them together. And I, you know, I hope to build a more beautiful world. I mean, one, you know, and inspire. And I hope, you know, sometimes I don't have all of the inspiration inside of myself, but I know that there's others that do. And so the more that we share that and give space for not only our own work, but also for others to talk and to, you know, to talk about their work, to talk about their visions of the world, I think we'll all grow together. Well, that's, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, I think, I think that that's a very uh, high point to, to, to end, but I have something more that I wanted to, to say because you, you were just making this analogy of art university. And I would say what you're doing is like fucking way better than art university because the art university is talking about the same 50 white dudes, artists, uh, the, the super famous, the Picassos, the Dalis, you know, which I love. I'm not throwing shade on these people. I love them. You know, I got a Picasso tattoo right here, even if I know he was a little bit troublesome. Uh, but you are interviewing artists from all levels, you know, beginners to like super pros. So you're on that side, way more inclusive than any art university that I've ever heard about. But on the other hand, you are doing this open to the public. You know, you, you, you are doing this for everybody. You're not doing just for the art students, you know, and especially, you know, when the U.S. where art university is super expensive, not a problem that we have here in the, in Europe, but, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, I don't, I don't want to throw shade on that too, but you are doing this it, it's in, in a much bigger scale, much more inclusive about the, on the artists that you talk and much more inclusive on, on your audience. So that's fucking amazing. So I, I'll take my trans, my imaginary hat off to you at this moment. And uh, I, I wanted to thank you for, for taking this time. Uh, I love it. I love this chance to, to actually interview you because you don't talk a lot in your interviews. You let the other people talk. So it was very nice to put you on the hot seat, let's call it. Uh, and uh, I, I think that, you know, maybe uh, some people have some questions for you too. You know, it's like uh, John, Rhea, Romy, Jordana, what, you got any questions for, for Aaron? Hey, this is Jordana. Um, sorry, my camera, I killed it. Um, I just had a question about uh, how you keep your own voice, you know, because, um, uh, you know, you're you're a very flowy in the moment, you know, compassionate witness kind of <laughs> vibe. And, um, you know, you're, you're creating your own art. Um, do you notice like other people's voices um, coming through your art after you talk with them? And then do you notice like the ebbing of your voice than taking the forefront again? That's a really intriguing question. <laughs> Cause you're, you're right. That, that's like, that's like my thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a struggle with my voice. Like I, I have a struggle with that because a lot of my work right now, um, my painting work is my, understanding of the music through me um but i think that's kind of like what there is in the world is we can view the flower we can listen to the music and then it's how we interpret how we understand 
Um, and I've noticed the more that I reach out and I hold space for others, uh, the more that opportunities like this exist for me. And so I think it's um, really just like to pay it forward. I, I lived for a while um, up the mountain from the Dalai Lama temple and I went there for a while and just like all of these wheels, these Dharma wheels are rounded and to just keep running around, you know, not right, but like, like walking around and spinning all these wheels and everybody walks around and spin these wheels. And the idea is that, you know, they go around, but you have to like keep spinning them. And it's not just like one person who spins this wheel, this Dharma wheel, it's everybody needs to. And so sometimes it takes somebody to start spinning a wheel and, you know, for it to gain momentum and be easier for others. So, um, in that way, I find that it's kind of like, it's a balance. It's a balance of, <laughs> it's, it's a for sure balance that I struggle with. <laughs> but the more that I do this, uh, the, the more that I, that I find the opportunities for me to speak myself, the more that I find opportunities to now show my own work, um, the more that I'm able to be a part of that process to not only be a conduit, but also a voice. So I, I hope that answered your question, but I definitely, that's definitely a struggle you pinpointed of mine. Yeah. <laughs> I I've, mean, I don't think there was any wrong answer. <laughs> no, I'm just, I mean, the I, answer I, is I, the answer, you know, and, and um, I agree with you about the construction workers. Like, we were just on vacation in Italy and, and I was like taking pictures of this um, uh, big yellow vehicle. I can't remember what they're called in English, um, but you know, the construction machinery. Cause I remember all these paintings from like hundreds of years ago when we're like, really, they did it that way, you know? And, and Europe's kind of different cause they don't have the, the rubber U thing, help me out, John, what's that called? The tractor thing that we have in the States, they ha all have wheels because mm -hmm. they all have to be on the roads here. Yeah. And so they can't have these like big tank, you like know, a treadmill. Yeah. Like, a like, yeah, like the yeah. treadmill things. Yeah. Whatever they're called. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'm like, oh, that's so cool that I get to take a picture of this right now because in a hundred years, they're going to be like, oh my God, they did it like that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and just going back to the idea of voices, you know, it's like how important is this idea of your own voice? Your own voice is a remix of all the other voices that you heard. Also, you know? so, so, you know, it's like I, I like to uh, talking this with with an artist friend today. It's like every artwork is is a remix of every other artwork made before. And I think that your artist voice is is a remix of everything you heard from other artists and you know uh other pieces as well you know so so i guess that listening to many to the, these many artist voice just makes your 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 voice bigger and fatter and thicker you know it's like sturdier you might say well, i think it, it enhances the prism yeah like sometimes you go from a small prism and maybe, you know, you only get some of the spectrum and then you enhance the prism. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's intriguing, like this idea, like we, I think we're talking about two different things here. One, or, I mean, we're talking about many things, but one particular thing is like social constructivism um, and like how much are we made up of, um, our social construction, like uh, the the voices of those around us who we've talked to, and what does that mean, um, in you know, for our own like makeup and our own being? Um, so I so I find that that's like an interesting concept that we could go into a whole other like hour hour many hours on. Um, <laughs> and what was my other point? Uh, we, I got. So many, so many different things, but, but I think it's, I think it's just intriguing. Like, are we, you know, are these, you know, the prism and being, you know, as the metaphor is that we were talking about, um, 
made up of all of these different voices? Do these voices come through us? Do our, you know, some remnants of an ancestor speak through us or someone who an ancestor spoke to? Um, you know, to plug in my computer here, I have the cord right over here. Um, so like, or just like, you know, talking to the construction worker on the street, like that's, that's a very real voice and to be a conduit of the stories. Um, because I think as like humans, we're not only, you know, we talked about this earlier, like the Picasso, it's not only the thing on the street, it's a story that comes after that we're sharing, we're together, that brings us together on the same page, a story, the things that add together that we're able to be in the same moment. And perhaps there's something in that, that, you know, as visual artists, you know, really considering this, like, you know, we are coming here and sharing stories, asking, you know, creating space for community here like that's so beautiful and um and how can we not only you know be you know providers of space how can we be storytellers how can we provide a fire how can we do these different things and i think to do them in a way that's engaging and real and of the moment that requires play <laughs> all goes back to playing anybody else questions i do i have a question um oh now you're muted now we, yeah we can see you but now we you're can muted. see you we can read your lips okay <laughs> that's that's a skill i do not have um <laughs> um i i am curious listening to you curious about your curiosity and where you feel like it was sparked to do what you're doing and keep following it or maybe who you admired um, or something you admired if there can ever be an origin source of any <laughs> beginning of anything <laughs> but just curious um i i think if we're talking about the interviews um if that's what you're specifically curious about my curiosity in that um maybe with like charlie rose marilyn of parkland um those are two people that i really like look up to and you know there's there's a whole lot like other, you know, Terry Gross, like there's a lot of fascinating interviewers out there that kind of like gave me inspiration. Um, and I, and I, I think there's, there's an idea of like transactional inspiration that I heard about from my friend, uh, Jennifer English, who's the, um, we were talking and she's at it at, editor at large for uh, food and beverage magazine and um, as well as a James Beard award winner. And she's talking about this idea of transactional inspiration that we're um, that, that like a burger is not just a burger, but it's like the inspiration that's gone in it. And that's why we want that one burger is because it's not just like the thing that someone slapped together. It's that there's been inspiration inside of it and that, you know, that inspiration inside of that, um, that burger is a thing that inspires a piece of music to come from us, a story, an idea, a feeling. It's not, and to say that's not just, you know, in that one piece of art that I viewed, it's in the food that I've eaten, it's in the people that I've interacted with. It's that, you know, a top, you know, a conversation with a friend is that the people that I've interviewed some of them have become friends and that they inspire me and i think it's you know there's it come 
inspiration comes from many sources, from our environment, from our food, from the sunshine, from a beautiful plant that happens to grow there, or maybe someone planted purposefully, you know? It's like that tree that decide, you know, that is growing in that place that someone watered is that's sometimes that one flower, you know, that smell of that one flower just inspires my being and that allows me to continue on. Mm. That's that's very interesting. Guys, I, I don't want to be a party pooper, but that's all the time we have. Uh, Aaron probably needs to go do something cool like DJ at Clubhouse and moderate a uh, group of artists. Man, it was it was like it was truly a pleasure here uh, having this chance to talk with you, um, and uh, I think that the guys enjoyed it too. Um, Where do we find these interviews? They're all on uh, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you find them on my Instagram at Aaron Jack Line Art, A A R O N J A C K L I E L I N E A R T. Yeah, Aaron and, Jack. Uh, I, I would recommend you all to reach out to Aaron and ask if you can be interviewed because I know these guys over here, they're, they're on top, they're great, their art is great, and you know, uh, I know that Aaron is super open and inclusive with his interviews, so uh, I, I think it's a win-win scenario over there. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> I, I, I didn't say he would interview. I, just said, like, that, so. I can open up right now. <laughs> so so right now I'm uh, my my uh, my full length interviews. I've I've started to do less and less of them. But Clubhouse, <laughs> that's a good place. That's a good place. I have I have room on my panels and my things and. Um, yeah, so right now, maybe, maybe, you know, there's no promises here, but definitely find me on Clubhouse. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for How's joining that? us. Yeah. Thank you. Ciao. Okay. Thank you. Aaron, we'll be in touch. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> we will.